Hello everyone, welcome to Out of Spec Guide. I'm Max and I'm covering some news that's happened in the last week. There's been a huge announcement in the world of fast charging for electric cars. Basically seven automakers together, a coalition of them announced the biggest, uh, baddest uh, charging public charging operation we've heard of yet in the US or honestly globally. They want to install 30,000 sites, I presumably over the next two years, that will support both Tesla's North American charging standard and the existing CCS standard we already see at charge providers like Electrify America and EVgo. This is going to be its own network. We don't know what hardware they're going to use. We don't know a lot of details, but I'm going to fill you in on why this is a big deal, what we can expect, and uh, what to look out for because this is huge. We need it, and I'm going to explain all of it for you, so stay tuned. All right, you join me inside because it's a lot quieter in here than it was out at the Electrify America station in the Boulder Mall. But anyhow, what I want to talk about today uh, is explaining this news, breaking it down, because we've heard so much charging news this summer uh, between the Tesla North American charging standard and all the partnerships and now this uh, and there's been previous announcements about partnerships between charging operators and automakers but this is something new altogether and it shifts the scale of the conversation towards basically a almost honestly a whole new order of magnitude what's going on it's seven automakers in this group we've got bmw gm or general motors honda who interestingly enough doesn't sell an ev in the u.s yet but they will uh hyundai and kia mercedes-benz and Stellantis. So multinational, Asian, European, uh, and American groups in this. Notably, this doesn't include players like Ford uh, or you know big legacy automakers like them, as well as other startups like Rivian, who themselves have announced partnerships with Tesla. Now, that's not to say they're mutually exclusive because two automakers in this group, General Motors and Mercedes-Benz, have officially announced they will support Tesla's North American charging standard. And as of next year, next summer, they will have an adapter for customers. So those customers can charge at Tesla superchargers. Just about um, half of the existing Tesla superchargers installations we're seeing. So this news sort of, um, it's not mutually exclusive to that. It combines with it uh, because up until now, Tesla superchargers have been by far the largest uh, single network in the US. Uh, while they've been exclusive to Tesla until recently, they are just huge in scale. There's almost 2,000 sites in the US, and at those 2,000 sites, there's almost 20,000 chargers. In uh, existing non-Tesla chargers speak, we've got like 32,000 DC fast chargers that are publicly available across I don't know, an unspecified amount of sites. It's more distributed, it's more spread out. You have ChargePoint, EVgo, Electrify America, uh, Shell Recharge, all kinds of different companies in this space. This is a big unified move though from these seven automakers saying, we're gonna effectively double that. 32,000, add 30,000 more chargers to that across an unspecified amount of sites. Uh, some of these sites are gonna be very premium. They're gonna have canopies, they're gonna have restrooms, accommodations, um, lots of really cool things going on. And this is not entirely unprecedented in terms of what, like, at an individual level, there have been stations we've seen, both Tesla and non-Tesla, that have lots of chargers and even canopies and all cool features like that. If you're uh, curious, check out my boss's Kyle's video on that aspect reviews, where he visited a site in Baker, California, with a huge Tesla supercharger installation, over 100 stalls, and an Electrify America um, station with a single digit number of stalls but a canopy uh, so huge dc fast charging operation there we've seen a few stations like that presumably under this deal we're going to see a lot more and they're going to have a branding that we're not familiar with yet i i guess these seven automakers have announced this super early they've yet to actually announce how they're going to brand it but it's going to be huge it's going to uh, basically start rolling out next summer 2024 and lead into 2030 uh, by 2030, hopefully, those 30,000 high-powered charge points will be installed. And this is to meet a, a much rising EV demand for charging. Already, I would argue there's a scarcity of chargers. Um, there's not enough chargers in remote areas. Even in urban areas, we're seeing congestion both at Tesla superchargers and publicly available chargers. Um, so this is going to hopefully help alleviate that, as well as once we do finally see saturation and redundancy in charging, then we can have competition. I would argue we're still a ways out from competition in charging, even though Tesla with its superchargers now being open to more automakers and this news you know, that indicates more chargers, but we actually have to see that. In so many places in the US, you only have a choice of one 
fast charger from one brand that may or may not be compatible with your car. The direction we're hopefully going in in these next few years seems to suggest that more interoperability will be in place. There will be adapters, there already is one, for Tesla cars to charge at non-Tesla sites. More sites, including Electrify America, will natively install the Tesla cable so Teslas can charge there. And then importantly, these Tesla superchargers, as we've heard earlier this summer, are going to support all kinds of vehicles that aren't Teslas as well through the use of an adapter and eventually those vehicles having a Tesla plug in them. So in North America, we're living in a bit of a complicated world, two different charging standards going on. They're not really competing against each other. They're gonna live in harmony. They're interoperable, which is great. There's gonna be adapters. This news only expands that. And the scale of it is truly huge. While it's so early and there's so many uncertainties, I really have nothing but uh, nothing but high hopes for this. And they are hopes, they're ambitions that we haven't seen met yet. And I do have to uh, specify that there have been partnerships announced in the last few years, like one with GM and EVgo to install over 2,000 fast charging sites, and we've heard little about it. I'm sure it's in the works, but basically my point is these things take a while. It's not trivial to install DC fast chargers, and Mercedes announced a partnership with ChargePoint. There's all kinds of deals being made, uh, and they're all in progress. So none of this, I think, is going to happen particularly soon. The timeline they're giving is fairly optimistic, I think, to double the amount of charger rollout. However, it's possible, perhaps, because in the last, you know, five, six years, we've seen there's been 3,600 Electrify America sites in the U.S. Um, so, you know, that's been a possible rollout. Uh, it's been greater than five years, but in the next five years, they're saying we're going to effectively double that uh, and then some. That's big news. In Europe, there actually is a brand called Ionity, which is sort of like what we're hearing about now. It's a coalition between several automakers that's installed somewhere in the neighborhood of, I believe, 3,000 chargers across Europe. The experiences at those stations have been good. They tend to be premium, high-powered chargers, uh, and involved in that are BMW, Mercedes-Benz, and Ford, interestingly enough. So that's a European thing. This is like our version, our take on that in the U.S., but I find it interesting that Major automakers like Ford are not involved in this. That's not to say that Ford isn't doing its own thing with charging, right? They were the first to announce a partnership with Tesla and they have the existing Blue Oval Network, which is their app kind of helping centralize a bunch of charge networks into one for Ford owners. So you get Shell, Recharge, Electrify America, EVgo, Flow, ChargePoint, and others all in one app. That's great. This experience is to be determined, but supposedly these seven automakers in the US are going to try to have a basically one payment platform, I guess, and support plug and charge. So vehicles that support it, which hopefully will be all future electric cars and some existing ones on the market right now, uh, will be able to just plug in, communicate with the charger uh, and authenticate without you, the user, needing to do anything. Once you've set up your payment, it, you're good to go. You pull up to these chargers, you plug in and they bill you automatically the same way Tesla works. Will it be a seamless? How will it actually roll out as it becomes more standardized? I don't know. We see plug-in charge at existing Electrify America sites, but its rollout has been limited. So this is full of open questions. Uh, and then, of course, in parallel to this, other automakers like Rivian have their own proprietary charging sites, which they say they will open up. That rollout has been very limited, but my point is the diversity of chargers is only increasing and the scale is increasing rapidly. I don't know, it's honestly, you know, too early to declare a winner in this race. I mean, aside from Tesla. Yes, Tesla was first in this space, but they're not gonna be alone, and I think that's a good thing. One, Tesla by themselves cannot meet all the demand for charging for everyone in the US, and two, we shouldn't be relying on a monopoly to charge every car. Um, as we've seen in the gasoline industry, gasoline is a huge business. Energy is a massive business. It's too important to be left to one company. The companies that do control it are hugely influential and powerful, and hopefully for the sake of the consumer and price competition and uh, better experiences, we can see competition actually emerge in the space where Tesla has some challengers and they have to raise their game and hopefully those challengers meet Tesla to the occasion and even rise above it and we can get better experiences, more ubiquitous charging, interoperability, nothing but good things. I'm hoping to come. However, this is so many unknowns and we have yet to actually see what these charges will look like. You can bet though that out of spec, we'll be covering them for the minute that we can. The first sites that open up, we'll try to cover, and we'll just uh, update you on this news as it rolls out, as well as other news in the world of charging and electric cars. 
If this video has been helpful to you, please let me know. If you have questions, if there's things that you're still uncertain about, I know I am, please comment those below. We have an email you can reach out to, guide at adaspecstudios.com. If you have specific other questions or topic suggestions that you want us to explore in future videos, whether it's related to charging, vehicles, or ownership, that's all our game. So let us know what you want us to cover. I've been Max with How to Spec Guide, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks.